Awesome, I hope you enjoyed the first episode of the interview with Module Virus. Today we're chatting about his favorite software, he's giving us some production secrets. We're also going to chat about drinking beer with Parasens in Russia, his thoughts on DJing versus production, his thoughts on producing other genres, and he's going to give us a little insight into the sample pack that he's created and selling. So if you guys are keen for that sample pack, I'm going to post a link in the description below, but stay tuned for the interview to hear what he has got to say. So then to the next question, what is your favorite uh, software or plugins? Uh, w one of my favorite plugins at the moment is Avenger. Mm -hmm. I've tried Avenger for everything. Basically because uh, with Avenger you can, make, you can make anything out of it. You just you need to know a bit of uh, uh, modulation and what you are doing. With the new concept of wave tables, it's just, wow, it just became so unique. And Avenger's got so much to offer. You can't imagine. But yeah, but I like to use mostly that. Uh, massive Stirum. I bought new one as well, Falcon. Still studying it. It's quite big as well, Falcon. Needs a little bit of work on it. I still need to learn a, li a little bit of things. Because it's not the same as the... Uh, it's like a little bit like contact, you know? Contact kind of, you need to create a host to send an automation to that. So you have you can control knob. Still uh, working around with that one. But it's mostly that one. I like as well uh, Razer. Have the best uh, phaser filter in the world, you know, to make like phaser scenes for me is the best. Mm. Also, it's the best vocoder for me to make it as a vocoder. And it's so easy. You just go and in initialize and you just start start on it. Because you look at the at the panel, it looks so simple. It's so easy to, to use. But the content that it is inside, it's really amazing. Yeah, I think that's why a lot, a lot of guys, um, they sort of underrate the, the, the reactor plugins and the reactor ensembles because the interface usually looks very simple, but they don't understand the amount of power that's underneath the hood, you know. Yeah. Also, there's a new one that I've been testing out. I completely forgot the name of it. Uh, it's, I think it's from the same guys that made the Tone, Tone 2. It's a new one that they just made. It's called Icarus. Able to size it as well. Wow, it's for make psychedelic synth. I make like a psychedelic synth in one minute. In one minute with the uh, Icarus. Why is this? Because uh, from what I was saying, Avenger for me is the best one. But there's one thing missing on Avenger, which is like good filters, like having good, good, good filters. Avenger doesn't have good filters. Sometimes I find myself making filters out of the equalizer to make filters that doesn't exist in the in Avenger. Mm. So like uh, Icarus have amazing filters and they have one filter is called the boobs filter. So it's like this, shape of, of, of two boobs. And man, it's it's so psychedelic that machine is super easy to make presets, like uh, 50 presets for that machine in like uh, two hours, man. <laughs> wow, I must definitely check that out. And it's a wave table as well. Mm. Yeah, you're going to love it. And uh, for processing, I, I also I go back again for vengeance. I'm a uh, vengeance fanatic, you know. I use mostly vengeance for everything, mostly for everything. I like the, my multiband compressor, multiband compressor to give a little bit of power to sound, you know. And I have my stereo bundle, uh, mastering stereo bundle, for give stereo and open up my sounds. That's why when you hear my music, it's got the power of the compressor and the power and the 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 image of the stereo which is always these big things i use it in the production i also use it in my mastering okay so those two are like my tricks that save my life you know who changed me to who i am from the quality from what was the past into what my quality is now is because those two plug in oh wow i must definitely get them i'm sure my viewers will very much appreciate that little bit of information <laughs> So on to my next question, out of all the countries that you've been to and played at and all the events that you've DJed in, which ones would you say have given you the most memorable experiences? Oh man, so much. South Africa, Mexico, uh, Portugal, uh, let me see. Also Croatia, I had so many great times in Croatia playing at Modern Festival. Like when I played in South Africa, for me, I think that was my first uh, I when I left South Africa, I even cried. I didn't want it to be South Africa. I was like, I was so much in love with South Africa because 
the way that uh, the people are and the way that people show me they love it was amazing. It was beautiful. I loved so much. And that, that was my first big experience in my life. Oh, wow. I'm glad to hear that our, my country was part of that. <laughs> yeah. And after Mexico as well and Costa Rica, I had amazing times over there. Russia. Uh, Russia was really cool. It was like it was really fun. They are really fun. They like to drink a little bit. <laughs> I can imagine. Good, good choices. Like I, I remember going with my friend Parasensi to to a bar that he took me. That they they brewed the beers in time. So every time that uh, they put a new barrel inside, it's a new beer, man. And we tried a few, and uh, each beer was tasting different, but so nice and unique. It was amazing. Oh, wow. That's definitely on my travel list. <laughs> um, and you mentioned earlier that you DJed before you started getting into production. Do you still DJ at events or do you mainly play live sets or is it a kind of mix match of both? Is there one yeah, that you no, prefer? I play live sets. I kind of got bored of DJ sets because in the end of the day, DJ set is seven plus seven and it's kind of easy. You just go and you collect the first kick and you put seven by seven to find the BPM. So I kind of got a bit bored of that that's why I straight away I went direction to production because DJing was not enough for me. I think I did like one or two years of it and then I, I stopped it. And do you create other genres other than Cytrons? Yeah, man. I love to be creative and just go and explore my boundaries, what, can, what I can do more. So I can bring much more elements to the Cytrons from other things. Have you got other musical projects, like in specific genres? Yeah, I have a, I have as well progressive, and I have a that step, chill out, like more ambient stuff. Um, inside of that dub step, I did so many things. Not just one project was like bringing so many other genres, like dub step, drum drum and bass, drum step, drum step, uh, rap music, EDM all sorts of all those things. It was when the EDM came out, you know, mm. and, you know, when EDM came out and you are hearing this type of music coming in your speakers and you see your speakers screaming, you kind of say, wow, what is this? So I kind of went, went in and tried it. Sound designing of these types of music is a bit different, like a lot of automation to make things talking and make, so it's really interesting. Yeah, you can learn a lot, you know, when you get out of like the of what you're kind of used to and you start learning things like sound design tips from other genres. You actually learn a lot which you can apply to sort of creating more unique Cytron sounds and stuff. It's something that I found a lot as well. It really helped me a lot. I did two years of these styles of music. Nothing, just for the heart, you know, just for myself because I love so much those screaming bass lines coming out of my speakers. <laughs> so I went to it and it was cool. But then I was like, I realized myself, oh, I'm doing all of this. I'm forgetting to actually who I am and what I should be focusing. So after two years, I stopped. No, let me carry on doing side trans. I had enough. I was doing side trans when I was doing this but because I was so much in love. Just I just wanted to make a new track every, every time I finish another one of bass. Yeah, I know the feeling, man. So you mentioned earlier that you've got a sample pack for sale. Um, do you maybe just want to give us a little bit of a insight as to what we can expect in that yeah. sample pack. Well, this sample pack, you, you can expect six kicks of uh, six different BPMs. That's from 145 to 150. you got about, uh, yeah, no, 15 kicks, 28 bass lines. Oops, sorry. Two crashes, 31 hi-hats, uh, 26 snares, 12 percussion loops, 95 spins, 36 uh, FX and 44 pods and it's uh, between keys of G, A, F, D and E. That's mostly my favorite keys and what I like to make the most. It took me about six months to make this pack actually because I started this pack last year and uh, I was working on it and I was working as well in my travel and coming back home and carry on working home. So this last year was really, really busy. So it was that's why I'm releasing it this year. I had like one track, uh, one BPM to finish. 
from last year and so this year i had a, a big source in the beginning of the year so i, I didn't have time into until so until four months ago and four months ago I, until now i relaxed and now summer starts again and crazy madness is there coming <laughs> Yeah, it happens. And and how much did you say you're selling the bank for? I'm selling at uh, 18 pounds. Cool. So I'll post a link to where uh, our viewers can grab that um, so they can support you and the sample pack and they can have a listen to some of those sounds that you're putting out. And also post some links to your latest album where they can grab that. That's pretty much it from the questions. If there's anything that oh, yeah. maybe, maybe you want to uh, mention to the viewers, Maybe like a little bit of inspiration that you wish somebody had told you when you were starting out, um, like a bit of secret sauce. I think the, the best inspiration is uh, don't be scared of uh, trying out to experiment. Best, don't be scared of making rubbish, you know, because sometimes when you make rubbish, out of that rubbish comes some unique thing. So just go learn. Don't be scared of touching any plugin. They are there for you for something. It's for you to use. Experiment, like well, because uh, I teach as well music. So like this is the first thing I tell. First, do shit, and after you clean up the shit, you delete all the shit, and you will see something very unique, and that will be called it's you. It becomes you, and this is my it was my best thing that I did in my life. Yeah, it's like they say, um, you you get diamonds out of the dirt. You know, it's yeah, you get diamonds out of the dirt. So, yeah, thanks for that little um, interview. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much, man. I'll speak to you soon. Awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you didn't know Module Virus's music, I'm going to post a bunch of links to where you can find it in the description. And let me know what you guys think in the comments. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. See you guys next time.